Team Sorcerers here, and welcome back to another episode of What If Wednesday. Um, now, this one was inspired by the video that um, uh, TGS Anime, I think I'm saying that right, did um, talk about was Joey, uh, no, was Odeon about to defeat Joey? Um, I think I got the title of that video right. Yeah, was Odeon about to defeat Joey? And I, I did get the name right. Uh, go and check out his channel and subscribe if you haven't done so already. He does some very interesting videos, including this dual analysis series. Plus he has done a few what if videos on there as well. So anyway, uh, this inspired me to do this episode talking about, uh, talking about what would happen if Odeon did beat Joey. Um, <clears throat> of course, this was a hard one to figure out, but before I get into it, um, I couldn't help but notice um, something about this duel. Um, I feel like there was a point where Joey could have actually legitimately won, like, a lot sooner, um, based on something he should have done. In the same turn he activated Giant Trunade. So what he should have done before summoning Hayabusa Knight was activate Giant Trunade, so that that way the way is clear for any newly summoned monsters. I mean, sure, Odeon would have still activated Judgment of Anubis, but Joey would have lost less monsters and taken less damage. Um, so let me see. He had 900 from Gearfreed, 700 from Little Wingard, so that's 1600 he would have taken. So he, he would have still just about had more than half his life points. Um, and what he also could have done is then summon his Hayabusa Knight and attack and do 2,000 points of damage. Although, um, I guess at this point he probably would have still been a bit hesitant to attack, I guess. Um, so, assuming he did attack with Hayabusa Knight, Odeon would have been left on 2,000. He would have set Fairy Box into this turn. Of course, at this point, Odeon would have then activated his three copies of Embodiment of Apophis. Um, he then would have attacked. Um, but I feel like um, he would have been able to save himself with Fairy Box. Um, because it works quite, it works differently back then. It made it so that it hides a monster in a box. Um, I wasn't sure if it would stop one attack or multiples, though. Um, but yeah, assuming it does work like that. Um, protects it from all three attacks, then Hayabusa Knight would have been safe. Um, then on his next turn he would have put Swordsman of Landstar in defence, switched Hayabusa Knight to defence, set Scapegoat, ended his turn, then Odeon would have attacked. Um, scapegoat would have activated, Magic Jammer would have still been played, Joey still would have lost both monsters, and uh, another 1600 life points, so that would put him on 800. Um, wait, no, he wouldn't have summoned Landstar in defence, I think. No. Yeah, he would have done, because he wouldn't have... I don't think he would have played Alligator's Sword right there and then. There's, that's more suitable for attacking. And then things would have played out in a similar way, where um, he'd set Grave Robber and Foolish Burial, put Alligator's Sword in defence mode. Um, 
then the three embodiments will attack. They need to do the combo of Foolish Burial, Grave Robber, get Jinzo out, destroy the embodiment, summon Battle Warrior, and then he would have attacked the game. Um, or alternatively, um, I guess things would have gone... Of course, in a similar way, if he didn't attack with Hail Boots tonight on that turn, then, um, then he would have uh, summoned Alligator's Sword, um, then attacked with that, then he still would have saved Hayabusa Knight, which then would have been... Uh, actually, no. I guess he still would have done, or Embodiment would have still been special summoned. Uh, yeah, I don't know. No. Yeah, assuming that... Um, Joey would have played Giant Truinade before summoning Hayabusa Knight and wouldn't have been hesitant to attack with Hayabusa Knight. He could have won. But, but that's not what this video is about. This is what would happen if Odeon actually won against Joey and progressed to the semi-finals. Now it does raise some uncertainty about what would happen with Marek and Yami Marek. Um, so, so the scenario is um, he doesn't use the fake wing dragon of Ra and um, Odeon finishes Joey off with Mystical Beast of Skurkit. Um, although, although Marek, um, I guess, would have been pleased that Odeon won, at the same time, he would have been annoyed that he delivered that Odeon disobeyed him and didn't use the fake winged dragon of Ra, along with the fact that, um, <clears throat> that people were starting to suspect that Odeon wasn't Marek. So, I feel like at this point, um, he would have been rumbled, and um, you know, Marek's true identity would have been revealed. But, I don't know whether or not Yami Marek would have come out. Because um, he only does when Odeon falls unconscious. And as long as Odeon was conscious, then um, Yami Marek wouldn't have sprung out. Um, I don't think it's likely that um, he would have that Yami Merrick <coughs> would have come out. So, um, which begs the question, how Merrick's duel with Mai would have gone? Um, well, presumably, he'd still use the same deck that Strings used, you know, with all the slime monsters. Only instead of build up to Slifer, he would have built up um, to the Winged Dragon of Ra. Um, but I'd like to think it would have played out in a similar way, um, most probably. Um, um, only with less of the torture cards, uh, so to speak. Um, so I don't know if we would have still seen Nightmare Wheel or not. Um, but in any case, I think things would have gone the same way, like Mai would have taken uh, the Winged Dragon of Ra, she would have tried to summon it, but it would be stuck in sphere mode, and Marek would have still brought it out, and defeated Mai. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I guess we wouldn't see Yami Marek here. It, it depends. 
Um, and then, you know, Kaiba goes on to defeat Shizu. Um, then the virtual arc happens. Um, I don't know whether or not Marek would still stand aside for the virtual world arc, or whether he'd get involved as well. It's hard to say, but I don't think things would have gone any differently. But fast forwarding, this moves on to the Battle City semi-finals. Um, and obviously, like I said, Odeon is there instead of Joey. Um, but I don't know how this battle war would have played out. Um, I feel like Odeon would have stayed more on the defensive um, and only really got involved if he brought out his embodiments plus mystical beast of Skirkit. Um, although at the same time Kaiba would be trying to get Marek and Odeon beaten so that he can face Yugi. Um, it's hard to say how this would play out. Um, but, but I'm pretty sure Kaiba would find a way to get them eliminated. So, this would mean that Kaiba would in fact face Yugi in the semi-finals while Odeon and Marek duel each other. Um, but, but it would be interesting to see how this would have gone down. Um, oh, and also bearing in mind at this point, Marek hasn't hasn't started to change his ways and go back to being a good person. Uh, he hasn't realised that he's gone too far. There's, again, Yami Marek isn't in the picture yet. So, it's hard to say how this would have gone down, but I feel like at this point, um, Marek would, I guess, would want to punish Odeon for disobeying him in the duel against Joey. Um, so, um, yeah, Marek really would go all out. Um, uh, I guess because of plot convenience, I'm not sure Odeon would have won this. I don't see a scenario where he'd come out on top, so... Uh, Odeon would have been beaten, but at this point, this is where a grave mistake happens. Um, or, or would it? Um, I was about to say Odeon would fall unconscious and Yami Marek would come out, but now I'm not so sure. Um, but would Marek go as far as to turn it into a shadow game? I guess maybe he would. Um, but then again, would it have become a shadow game if he played my? I don't know. Um, it's hard to say because when Strings faced Yugi, it wasn't a shadow game. Um, although, hmm. Although maybe Strings would have still taken the Millennium Puzzle and had Yugi sent to the Shadow Realm? I don't know. Um, yeah, see, th this is a really tricky territory, so you know, it, it's harder than you think, believe it or not. So, uh, Yeah, it depends. 
it depends how far Marrick would go, either, um, um, either he wouldn't have the heart to send Odi onto the Shadow Realm, or he would, but by doing so he unleashes Yami Marrick, and if that happens, then, um, the rest of the Battle City tournament just plays out the same way, um, with Marek then having a lot of regrets. Um, oh yeah, let's not forget those times where he mind controlled Taya. Would would that even still happen? Like you know, up until that stage, that's another tough one to figure out. Um, uh, either way, I can see Yami Marek coming out like an in boss mode um, and um, yeah obviously uh, the Battle City Grand Final plays out the same way so yeah I, I guess that this is my best guess as to what would happen. Like, that's all this What If series is, at least regarding things that would happen in the anime. It's just best guess, at least for me anyway. Um, so I feel like there'd be less of Yami Marek or no Yami Marek at all. Um... So, yeah, uh, that's truly believe, truly what I think would happen if Odeon had beaten Joey. Um, oh yeah, and then um, there also wouldn't be a third place playoff duel, as, as well, if, even if Odeon wasn't sent to the Shadow Realm by Marek, there'd be no reason for Kaiba and Odeon to duel. Um, that being said, maybe Joey probably still would have challenged Kaiba, like, you know, just as a duel outside the tournament, but, but we all know how that goes. And yeah, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think and whether or not I missed anything. Thanks for watching.